Hey, it's Joel Nott in the studio today. I'm with my friend Alvin. Hey, Alvin. Yeah. Hi. Good, Good to see you. Good we are at UC Berkeley, and where in UC Berkeley are we? We're in Atchafer Hall, the north side of the campus. And why are we here? We are here to talk about this holographic patterning setup. That holographic, you... I'm just going to stop you because holographic, holography, holograms. Yes. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. <laughs> We're 3D printing with holograms. That doesn't even make sense in my head. So help me. How can we do this? So while well, the additive manufacturing, the concept basically is to form the entire object all at once. Right, we are patterning all points of the object all together. Taylor, you know Taylor. We, we talked to him at Open Source a while back, and we got to see that glimpse of volumetric additive manufacturing. And this is similar in scope, right? Yes, similar in concept, but realized in a different way. Last time, uh, the technique that uh, you've probably seen is called tomographic volumetric AM. Mm -hmm. So basically, use tomographic scanning to reconstruct the entire object at once. We rotated things. Yeah. Right, right, right. And uh, this time, we are using a three dimensional image called a hologram to pattern the entire object without motion. This is so cool. We have a 3D image, yes. which is a hologram, broadcast into the material, yes. forming the 3D object at once. Right, right. We are projecting a 3D image, and then like uh, we are specifically designing a hologram such that the high intensity area will cure the object points here forming on the object, while the rest of the area will subject the uh, low intensity of light and stay liquid. So that uh, eventually then we can separate the solid and liquid phase of the material and then get the whole object out at once. The whole 3D object created by a hologram. No, okay, just. Just for everybody out there, let's let's make sure we have some base concepts down. Mm -hmm. A hologram, as far as what we're talking about here, is a 3D image, and you're using lasers to create it, correct? Right. So uh, a hologram, basically, uh, di different from 2D image, is that 2D image you only get one plane, right? You only see one image. You get you only get a slightly blurred image, uh, front and back. Mm -hmm. But for a hologram, a 3D image, you actually can get different image at different depth. Yes, the hologram is a, is a photo that has depth. Yes, exactly. There is, there is information deep with inside. Right, right, right. And you, you, we are shooting lasers to a device called spatial light modulator that treats the light in a particular way to uh, modulate the phase of the light. And then eventually we will project this three-dimensional image into the material here. Oh, oh, okay. So you're you're treating the light before it goes into here, and what and what does that do to the light? Is that creating the hologram itself? Yes. So the spatial light modulator will modulate the phase of the light. Light is a wave. It is a, if a phase and amplitude information. We are uh, modulating the phase of the light beam in uh, Fourier space. Basically, we are modulating at a particular level so that we will project a hologram after a few lenses. I line. see, I see. Oh, because you, you know what you want it to look like here, and because it has to go through a lot of stuff to get there, you know what it should start as in order to be the thing at the end. Right, right. We are designing uh, these optics specifically so that we can relate uh, a proper uh, holographic image here in the material. And you, you see a lot of components on the table. There's quite a few. Because we are not only projecting one hologram, but we are projecting two holograms and then using the intersection to produce a 3D object. That's so cool. I'll take two. Why would you need two holograms in order to do the process that you're talking about here? Yeah, so um, in traditionally, uh, even you can find in the literature or some papers, people have used like hologram to do 3D printing before, right? But the limitation of this technique is that each hologram has its resolution limit. The axial resolution along the beam is particularly poor okay. relative to the lateral resolution, right? So here we are now using two holograms to project the material so that the two holograms can complement each other and then pattern uh, the features that's aligned uh, oh. in a particular direction better. Just to make sure I'm understanding mm -hmm. this, so a single hologram, you lose detail in the depth or along the, the, axial, the axial dimension or you know, along the laser light. So if at a right angle you project another one, well essentially these two holograms together within a material are taking the the detail from each one and oh, it's so exactly cool. you get it okay perfectly. i think i get it you know i'm something of a scientist myself so you're wow. using the better resolution of one beams 
to pattern features that you can't pattern with the anatomy. Now, pattern, we talk about patterning features. Mm -hmm. Is that because we're broadcasting holograms within a material? Is it just, just the terminology here is patterning within, is that what we call it? Right, right, right. Yeah, the, I think the terminology follows from lithography, right? By playing ah, lithography, okay. we make oh. chips, right? And then yeah. here in this step, we're doing ex uh, exposure, patterning, and then we're just forming the structure here. Down the line, there's like a few steps that uh, we separate the object and then process it. So um, those are um, different processes. So we particularly isolate that we are doing the patterning here, just the light exposure on this table. Okay, if we talk about, like for example, SLS 3D printing, when we have nylon powder, mm -hmm. it's, it heats the chamber and then that laser just brings it over a threshold. So mm -hmm. then the hologram within this clear material is just bringing it over a certain threshold, a gelation threshold, to then harden it enough to be geometry that you can separate out. Right, we, get, uh, we want to hard, um, harden just right enough so that we don't cure the other stuff right. around I it. mean, it's within this volume, so you don't want it to like, just harden the whole thing. Right, right, otherwise the whole thing is gonna be <laughs> solid and then we don't want that to happen. Okay, so then you've taken your hologram created 3D print and you have it in this solution uh, and it's in a gelatinous state, not a right. fully cured, but gelatinous state. Right. And then what are the next steps to, to go for post-processing? Right, the first step we have to do is to separate the uh, gelled phase and the liquid phase, right? Well, how we do it is uh, through a straining process, basically like a filtering process. Like uh, we see that? Yes. Okay. Well, we so are, just like how when I filter my macaroni and cheese noodles from the water, yes. it's or, the same thing. Or we're separating just, the spaghetti. Or separating the spaghetti. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're just, it's right. just, it's a, it's a strainer. It's a literally just a strainer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's a much finer scale. Okay, so we've strained it. We've taken our spaghetti strainer, we've mm -hmm. strained the noodles, in fact, you know, the 3D geometry here, and now you have this semi-gelatinous, tiny 3D object. On the strainer. On the strainer. Uh, how do you, I guess at this point, you, you, you would have to finish the cure somehow, right? Right, right. So uh, what we do is usually to wash it with acetone. And acetone? Then, yes. Okay. It's a common solvent. And then uh, we basically, when we wash it, the, the part will fall into the development solution, the solvent, the acetone. And then we will put it in the post curing chamber. It throws more light into uh, unpatterned light to uh, cure it further, cure the material to bring the degree of cure up. Unpatterned light. Yeah. I like that specifically because we're dealing with pattern light here. Yeah, yeah. So then the post cure is you've got this 3D geometry within an acetone solution. And acetone obviously isn't going to harden when you throw unpatterned light, but mm -hmm. it's just a global light. You're throwing mm -hmm. a light at it in order to cure what's in there. Yes, okay. it's a blanket illumination just to uh, bring up the degree of cure so that it's more widget to handle. And how long does it do that for? Uh, usually a few minutes, depending on the intensity oh, of the Oh, just a few minutes. Well, I guess yeah. the part's so small, yes, right? It yes. doesn't really have to. Do you have to heat it at all during this process? Uh, usually, here you don't. Uh, we just use light. Okay. I think, but um, for certain material that uh, people use, I think uh, you can also use thermal post cure, give it uh, some special material properties. Hmm. It's an iron optitude. Well, I guess, I guess at this point, we're still talking about the research phase of all mm -hmm. of this because as, as this grows as a, as a concept and as a, as, a, as a method of doing something cool, then there will be more materials, there will be larger vats, there will be workflows that you invent and follow up on and, and do stuff with, right? Right, exactly. Because this is that's a one of the techniques of the volumetric AM, um, people have been constantly developing new material for volumetric AM in general. And those materials can be readily adopted for this particular application, for this particular setup. So uh, we, we do look forward to see all the new exciting material coming up very rapidly in this few years. I'm excited for it too. You know, if you think about Star Trek and the, and the, and the replicator, right. a Star Trek replicator. It's your computer here fixed about the best martini I ever had. When people talked about 3D printing, they're talking about this is how we, you know, this is like a Star Trek replicator because we can build something out of nothing. But, right. but volumetric 3D printing, the ability to create the entire 3D geometry at once, I feel like that's more of this science fiction technology that's really going to carry us forward because that's really cool. Yeah, that's what draw me into this research as well. It's extremely cool. And then like um, <laughs> this project is to explore like how, how good an object we can pattern with holographic light field. People are really going to want to know a lot more about this because this is fascinating, fascinating stuff. So Thanks. if you could just look right there and tell the audience where they can go to find out more. 
Well, this is uh, currently unpublished work, but like, when it's out, uh, I think Joe will uh, definitely put a link on the video so that you can find the paper. Oh, absolutely. Once this is published and white papers and all the information is available, I will absolutely put a link in the description and I will shout it from the mountaintops because people are oh, going to want to know about this. Alvin, this has been a joy, man. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much. If you've made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for cause you believe in. Volumetric print all the things. There you go. Yeah. And as always, high five. Nailed it. Oh, yeah. Chris. Oh, yeah. Sciency. <laughs>